Hamster! There's a new Pokemon game coming out, and it's not being developed by Game Freak! Wait, but why? This seems so unnecessary! How can we trust any other developer with the Pokemon IP? Hamster! There's a new Pokemon game coming out, and it's not being developed by Game Freak! Oh, thank God! It's about time! Nobody could possibly screw it up any more than Game Freak, that's for damn sure. Actually, um... I was lying. It's just Game Freak again. Uh, this time they're selling overpriced and underdeveloped DLC in cloud storage. I feel violated. I think my anus is bleeding. Remember back in 2004 when we actually did get a mainline Pokemon game that was not made by Game Freak? <laughs> Those were the days. Hold on, what was that game? Rumble? Mystery Dungeon? Coliseum. Though I've played this game many times, I stupidly sold it and the Jirachi bonus disc to GameStop for a couple bucks back in the day when Gen 4 hit. Yeah, I'm not proud of that. But it's hard to explain to younger generations what the dread of Gen 4 felt like. You played Metal Gear Solid 5? Amazing game. Earlier ones are great too. Outstanding even. And then Kojima left, and they made Metal Gear survive. Never mind, it felt exactly like that. Anyway, I don't physically own this game anymore, but I'll gladly hold a GameCube controller and pretend that I'm playing it for your amusement. Don't ruin the illusion! The developers at Genius Sonority weren't screwing around when they came up with this title. It could have been a simple next-gen Pokemon Stadium, but they went above and beyond with innovative ideas that should have changed the series for the better. It's hard to put a finger on why exactly this game feels so much better than the others. I'ma put my fingers all over this. Just don't lick the inside of the GameCube again. I keep getting discreet errors every time he touches the laser. I'm going to list just a few of the huge changes to the formula in this game. First off, there are absolutely no gym badges to obtain holding your hand around the region. The game's story direction feels very organic as you explore a disheveled and disenfranchised world, bouncing from outpost to ghetto-filled slums. Very unlike Pokemon. Secondly, there is no grass to obtain wild Pokemon. Instead, you have to literally steal back Pokemon corrupted by a purple shadow aura from the bad guys to add them to your team. You'll also need to battle with these shadow Pokemon to cure them of their purpley affliction and with their various unique hindering mechanics, this can be a real challenge. Thirdly, every single battle in the game is a double battle. You will enter battle traditionally with trainers and thugs around the world, and they are your only source of XP, making your choices of who to raise and who to abandon in the box crucial. You can even fail to catch a good number of shadow Pokemon, so you better make sure you save often if you hope to snag them all and get the best team for the game. Your starting Pokemon are the fittingly delinquent duo of Umbreon and Espeon, both of which are pre-trained up to level 25. Now this starts the game off with a bang as you're already an established trainer in a world full of higher level trainers to keep the challenge higher and more satisfying than simply starting at level 5 babies to overleveled monstrosities like in other Pokemon games. Even though it was on the GameCube, you could still even trade with your GBA games and play with your favorites in full 3D. I still have this otherwise completely useless cable. Look at it! There's even a series of 100 battles with breaks on the tens that is a serious challenge. It was a blast playing through them and definitely gives the game a ton of extra hours and replayability. Why didn't Game Freak catch on to any of these amazing ideas? They were all risky moves to try out but ended up all being super interesting and created a far more impressive and innovative product in the end. Somebody's gotta keep that anus of yours bleeding, hamster and they're gonna milk that back door for all it's worth. Taken for what it is on the GameCube, this game still looks amazing. There's a reason people were comparing Game Freak's Sword and Shield cash grab to this 16-year-old hidden gem. Hint, it's because Colosseum aged like wine and Swish aged like milk. Now it is important to mention that some models and animations from Gen 1 and 2 Pokemon were ported from the N64. Now that's disgusting. 
but the ported Pokémon weren't given new looks because the game doesn't give you access to them to begin with. You need to trade them in manually in order to see them all. Look at the cable! Look at it! So the vanilla game looks and animates like butter. Outside of some quirky animations in the overworld, battles are really impressive looking. However, slow paced due to the animations. Looks wise and gameplay wise, honestly, this is the home console Pokemon game we always wanted. It just wasn't made by Game Freak. Which we now know was nothing less than divine intervention. You might want to sit down for a second here because I'm about to say something that will blow your mind into confetti spaghetti. This Pokemon game has a cool story and premise. What the f- <laughs> That's not possible! You play as Wes, a rogue anti-hero, defecting from an evil group team Snagum. You start the game by straight up robbing them of their most prized possession, a mecha cyborg arm enhancement created to steal Pokemon directly from their trainers. Wes then blows up the whole facility while escaping into the open desert on his freaking amazing one-wheeled hover motorcycle. Hold on, was this Terminator? Robocop? Blade Runner? Or did you by chance happen to say Pokemon? You meet up with a girl named Rui after saving her from being kidnapped by two thugs. Rui can identify shadow Pokemon just by looking at them. So the two of you set off to thwart Team Snagum's operations and bring light to the whole desolate, hopeless world you're inhabiting. Hey Game Freak, I'd like to introduce you to a little thing called Good Ideas. You take on several shady thug groups and underground operations while exploring the various locales before culminating in a massive battle with all the leaders of Team Snagum in their newly established Coliseum. The sad thing is this isn't even that in depth. It's just amazing when compared to how pitiful Pokemon game stories and settings usually are. This whole video wasn't intended to be a giant slam at Game Freak, but Genius Sonority upstaged them over 16 years early with limited hardware and far less budget. Effort is a good thing sometimes. You should try it. If you're tired of being treated like a child in Pokemon games, try this one to be treated like a hardcore rogue villain. Are you sick of all the pitifully easy HM hand-holding baby's first RPG-esque Pokemon games? Then you either love this game or haven't played it yet. The difficulty of this game may be a turnoff to some, but it's become more of an acquired taste as the game actually becomes a challenging RPG. Pokemon, but no Game Freak. The positive gamer in me had a blast with Pokemon Coliseum, giving it an impressive 9 out of 10. I can't believe I'm rating so high on a Pokemon game of all things, but the sheer amount of breakthroughs this game created for the series are staggering, helping it to recapture and delight audiences new and old. The critical gamer in me reluctantly gives Pokemon Coliseum a 7 out of 10 for still having its fair share of problems like long animation wait times and occasionally confusing where do I go moments. But by no means is it a bad game. Its innovations and brilliant reimaginings helped change the Pokemon formula for the better. Or at least it should have. If you want to see more of Pokemon Coliseum, I did an entire randomized Let's Play on my channel, shameless plug. Yeah, as if this game wasn't hard enough. That sure cranked up the difficulty all right with our terrible luck. But if you think this game's not worth playing just because Game Freak isn't involved, then you're just playing with yourself. Unless, of course, you're one of our amazing Patreon members helping keep this channel chugging along. So big thanks to Atomic Thomas, Ben, Sid, Denny, Erica, Kai, Patrick, Pyro Joe, Rowan, and Squad Fam. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. Look at the cable. And I will see you guys in the next video. Booyah!